Good day everyone, my name is Noel Brown and this is Preparing the Way of the Lord Ministries. Welcome back to our series on Country Living. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for this opportunity to study and to learn from you. Guide us now, send your Holy Spirit. We ask, we pray, we thank you. In Jesus' name, Amen. In the last presentation, we saw that the General Conference did indeed continue to promote country living right up to today. Well, what about ASI? Things didn't look that promising when they were last mentioned. The SDA Encyclopedia stated in rewriting the Constitution and Bylaws of the Association of Self-Supporting Institutions, mention of rural living was omitted. It is interesting to note that while ASI did remove rural living from their bylaws, they never actually stopped promoting and teaching country living throughout the years. ASI stands for Adventist Layman Services and Industries. It is a branch of the church that utilizes laypersons and business leaders. This branch of the church has created a substantial catalog of instruction on country living. Going back to the medical missionary pioneer W.D. Frizee and his topics Enoch's Outpost and Another Ark to Build, which drew a parallel between Noah's Ark and how country living can create places of refuge in the little time of trouble. Checking the YouTube channel for ASI Ministry will lead to a video entitled Country Living, Practical Guidelines for End Time, Self-Sufficient Living, recorded in 2009. Uh, I've always believed in country living. Even when I worked for the denomination, I lived in the country. And uh, we raised our children in the country. And in institutional work and self-supporting work, our institutions are in the country. So uh, it's not something new for me. But I've never owned my own house to live in until two years ago. And when the ASI called me about six months ago and asked me if I would be willing to teach a country living seminar, my first question to them is, how did you happen to choose me? And what made it especially astounding to me was it was the very day that I received a semi-truck that had on the back end of it 18 solar panels, six for me, six for another neighbor, and six for another neighbor. We had ordered it together, and they arrived on the truck. And I said, how did you know I just got solar panels today? And they said, well, we didn't know, but we had a rumor that you were taking this pretty seriously. And we'd like you to do a seminar on it. So I'm just sharing with you my own personal experiences. It's not a professional expert at this, but I'm deeply convicted that God wants us to pay attention to the councils for today on country living. Audioverse, a member of ASI which provides thousands of Adventist sermons and lectures for free, including many on country living. Three powerful ones are The Call to Country Living by Duane Lemon, Country Living, Is It Salvational by Eugene Pruitt, and the classic Enoch's Outpost by W.D. Frazee. Here's a ASI ministry that's very popular, Amazing Facts. There is a sermon from 2005 entitled, When to Leave the Cities. I have been impressed to speak upon the subject of both country living and the cities, and more specifically, when to leave the cities. And uh, I hope you'll be praying with me as I proceed, and it may seem strange to you, that Christians would talk about when to leave the cities. You may be wondering, are we supposed to leave the cities? Where does that come from? Where should Christians try to live? Uh, how should we place ourselves in the light of the Bible and inspired counsel? And I'm also going to weave in my own personal experience, and we're all influenced by that a little bit, and it'll help you gain some perspective. If nothing else, you'll better understand why Pastor Doug and Karen are where we are. In 2016, they posted a video entitled Country Living with Doug Batchelor, showing viewers the Batchelor's country home while providing practical tips on the essentials for country living. You know, there's something wonderful about living out in the country. Uh, God designed people in the very beginning for country living. He took the first man and he put him in a garden. There's just something about being out in nature surrounded by the things that God made that is so much better for our bodies and our souls. This piece of property here, a friend invited me up to go into the wood selling business, selling firewood with him. And he had some issues with his family and he took off and left and he left me with the payments. 
and our family was able to buy this land one generation ago, a Bible generation, 40 years. And in that time, um, we've just learned a lot about living off the grid. Now, I don't know everything, but I thought I'd put together this program with the help of some of our Amazing Facts crew here and to share with you what I know about country living. In 2019, they published Heading for the Hills, a beginner's guide to country living. On October 15 this year, 2020, they streamed a video, Is it time to flee the cities? Question and answer with Doug Batchelor. And this is a great example because while Amazing Facts has lay members on staff, Doug Batchelor is a conference pastor. Another ministry, White Horse Media with director Steve Wahlberg, was consistently posting videos on country living during the coronavirus pandemic. On April 4, 2020, they live streamed Corona Crisis, Time to Leave the Cities. Right, now I think uh, some people that may be watching are, are not familiar with, with this whole idea of leaving the cities. You know, mm -hmm. this is brand new to them. Uh, but there are others who have been thinking about this for a long time. And there are many that have exited and have moved into more country places. And we wanna look at this from the Bible and just from common sense, uh, especially if you have a family, we, we have children. Uh, let's just talk, Tim, about some of the reasons, some of the good reasons for, for people. Four days later, they streamed practical steps to leaving the cities with guests Craig and Nancy Meisner, founders of the ministry End Time Preparedness. That is step number one, go to God first in prayer for guidance. Number two is have a goal. Um, to me, a, a goal I would have in contemplating a move to a place outside of a city, or you might live outside the city already. That goal would be to make sure you're in a position to have your independent wood supply, your independent heat, and your independent food supply. Remember, that's most important. Your independent water supply, your independent heat, and your independent food. On June 6, they streamed Still Waiting to Leave the Cities. And on September 3rd, they streamed Out of the Cities, When, Where, Why. I must commend them for keeping this important topic before the people. When it comes to in-depth education on country living, four lay ministries come to mind. One, You Can Survive by Jer and Linda Franklin. Their most popular book is entitled You Can Survive. Lincoln Steed, editor of Liberty Magazine, had this to say about the book. Any reader who applies himself diligently to this book will be rewarded and uplifted. A sincere and practical outline for survival and revival. Two, Sustainable Preparedness, a ministry of Nick and Lisa Meisner dedicated to helping people relocate out of wicked cities into the country and how to not simply survive but thrive. They feature a selection of books, DVDs, and an off-grid boot camp course. Also, they produce the documentary Urban Danger. We're all probably familiar with these stories and images from the Great Depression. But it's an often forgotten fact that many of these heart-rending accounts have a common denominator. Location. The city, but they had food lines and people would have to I don't know how often they went or what they got, but it kept them alive. And we didn't have that problem. We always had um, things on the shelf. And even now when I shop, I got more on the shelf than I probably, you know, eat. We were a very poor depression family, but we lived on a farm and we had food and they can. And uh, I can remember them getting up in the middle of the night to uh, put wood in the fire, always on a wood, on a, on a wood stove. Uh, they're just, as poor as we were, we were a very self-sufficient, happy family.
What would happen to this nation if some event or series of events plunged it into a depression like 1929? What would be different now? Would it hit us harder than it hit them? Are we more vulnerable than they were? Three, Country Living University, a ministry of Dave and Laura Westbrook, teaching from A to Z how to move out of wicked cities into the country. Four, Living Man Ministries by Elvin and Marcia Bridges has produced in-depth presentations on the spiritual as well as practical side of country living. On their YouTube channel, you can view their Out of the City series featuring the anti-typical Exodus, the sequel in Practicum, and a threequel, Appeal to Parents to Leave the City. This is Reno, Nevada. We are in downtown Reno. And as you can see, the phrase for this city is the biggest little city in the world. Now, there are 35,000 cities in the United States of America, 35,000 cities and municipalities. This city, to me, is very interesting, and it really caught my attention because it says the biggest little city in the world. Now, what do they mean by that? Well, they're actually expounding on the fact that even though it may be small in size compared to like maybe a New York or a Los Angeles or Chicago, the components or the elements or the characteristics of Reno are the same as those big cities. We're in the city, Reno, Nevada. This is not where God wants us to be. Have you begun praying? Have you begun packing? Hopefully you have, prayerfully you have. The Lord doesn't want us here. He wants us to be as far away from the cities as possible. He wants you and I, brother, sister, to be in the country amongst nature's works, amongst the scenery and the greenery of God's creation. This is where the Lord wants us to be. This is where the Lord needs us to be in order to have the best opportunity to form and shape our characters in the likeness of Jesus Christ. Finally, if you go one step further and go to YouTube, then search for SDA Country Living, you will find numerous channels and videos by Adventist church members. And it seems this number just grows each time you check the search again. Some that I have subscribed to are Aloha Country Living. Hey guys, good morning from Hawaii. It's early morning here and we're going to go pick some fruits for breakfast. I'm in the tree now. Let me see what I can find. All right. Hi there, my name is Arielle Pierre, and welcome to our channel, The Foraging Family. We are a family that loves working on our family farm. We also love foraging for wild plants and wild edibles. And we also love learning more about God out in nature. It's Ernie and Kim. Kim's back there. Hi guys. Welcome to our channel, City Exodus. And so our channel is gonna be a bunch of videos showing our family and our move to the country from the city. Uh, right now we live in suburbia, a uh, very crowded place in San Diego. And we've gotten this message so intensified uh, the last year and a half that we finally decided to start planning and start moving. Had so many different kinds of excuses uh, not to move out to the country, but as the message grew stronger and stronger to us, uh, all our excuses, uh, little by little, God had been, you know, getting rid of uh, any excuse I had as far as occupation, money. Praise the Lord, He's done so much for our family to open up the pathway to get out to the country for our kids' sake. Um, and not only that, but a way to go from the country and be closer to God, but also um, to be able to do outreach in the cities. And so that's what we want to do. Our goal is to get out there, to be closer to God, uh, be, uh, be in nature and just, <laughs> and just um, go back into the cities and do a lot of our outreach and ministries. From city to country.
good morning guys we're going to meet with the landlord for the first time nothing is written in stone yet we're just going to meet the guy and his wife so we have just finished the meeting with the landlord and the landlady and they love us and we like them too they're quite they're quite a lovely couple I think we're gonna like it here so we just signed finished signing off everything with the estate agents and we are now moving to the country Yay! country living and the bible what does the bible say about it hey everybody chad cruiser here with health and homestead humans were created and designed to exist in a certain environment it was called the Garden of Eden. Now the word Eden in the Hebrew language means pleasure. So this was the Garden of Pleasure. The Garden of Pleasure would be a place that would bring the highest level of, of joy, satisfaction, peace, and happiness that you could ever experience. And that's where God made man. So we could infer that people who live in a natural garden environment would be the happiest people in the world. And we're gonna find out actually that's what research is now telling us. Who is happier, city folk or country folk? The general social survey that has been conducted since 1972 to 2012, reveals that those who live in large American cities are statistically the least happy people. It also reveals that people who live in small towns or rural areas are the happiest. Interesting that those who live in the country amongst more natural settings, garden-like areas, are the happiest people because God made them for our happiness. Okay, so as, as you can see, the, the title of the presentation is Lessons Learned, a 20-year retrospective of country living in the NGM. Uh, NGM stands for North Georgia Mountains. How did I learn about, about country living? Well, the catalyst for our country living journey was Dave Westbrook's Out of the Cities rally in, in Atlanta, Georgia, around the spring of 2005. Now, what I deeply appreciated about what Brother... Westbrook did was he took the book Country Living and, and basically put it in chrono, chronological order. And so he presented this, this, uh, this copy. And what was interesting is, is to see the, the urgency, right? That, that Ellen White kept pressing um, that out of the cities, you know, that's the message. That's what she's being, uh, she's being shown. Living Green with us. Hello and good afternoon. Welcome to our channel. Out of the city's ministries, a Haitian Creole channel. Le Grandville. Série ça la basé sur expérience famille qui déjà choisi pour quitter Le Grandville et nous allons chercher à répondre question ça. Qui raison qui fait que ou même ma famille ou t'es choisi pour quitter Le Grandville. Moi même été I didn't have to make a change in the path of the career. Okay, okay. In the career that you have chosen, you didn't have to make a change. Yes, exactly. We had to make a change in the 
bon Dieu t'a fait un travail dans le canon, bah qui va t'en mettre en avant ça. Oui, il y a une distraction. Qu'on a un problème pour vous. Yes, spécialement samedi après-midi, là, on sur l'église, on a fait un peu de monde, on a fait un peu de monde. On a fait un ambiance. Ça, c'est fait qui gagne, musique qui gagne. Ça, c'est tout ça, on commence à venir dans le problème qu'on a là. On va dans la paix, on va bailler, on est toujours bouleversé. Bouleversé. Wow. Chers frères et sœurs, ça, c'est très important parce que là où on va vivre dans les villes, même ça, bas, les bouquins de ça, bas, les vins difficiles. Parce que l'ambiance ou là dans la grande ville, elle est totalement contraire à l'esprit de ça. Simple Life Ministries. Hi, Simple Life Ministry. Lorna here, back at you with another video. I am in the market in Montego Bay. And this is where we come to buy cane. But you know, say, cane is not only good for gas, it's good for magnesium, calcium. Lots of things. Yeah. Lots of things. Um, no, no, yes, no. Cane is good for. Yeah. All this green, you would never know that there is, it's packed with food. Packed with food. The, all of these I planted, this is. Um, the pumpkins and I want to come and show you some of the pumpkins here the beans are blossoming so those will be up and ready soon I planted some red peas but those did not come here is a pumpkin right there so beautiful like it gives me such joy Hi guys, okay, so today we are putting up um, some fencing because um, we've had some problems in our field with deer and rabbits and they've been eating our violas and that caused a bit of a problem because we had an order for about 350 viola heads one time and literally the night before we had to go and harvest, um, the deer had eaten the heads of probably about two thirds of our flowers flower plants. So um, we thought for the beginning of the season we would put up some fencing. So through the ASI arm and lay brethren, the message of country living had been consistently presented. The problem was that many members had no idea that this information existed. We can see that there was good in letting the lay people take the forefront in presenting country living. Individuals skilled in agriculture or trades could provide better instruction than say a GC man or pastor who is not practically trained. However, there has been a negative consequence of the general conferences reducing their promotion of country living. First, since the teaching of country living has been delegated to the local conferences, if the local leadership is not excited about it, or if they themselves were not taught country living, the general membership would also have no knowledge of country living. Secondly, this creates a problem for the lay members who teach country living. When church members hear this message for the first time from a lay member, 
the tendency would be to think that the presenter is fanatical or an extremist. This is the very issue that I wanted to address. This is why I focus on showing you all those years of documentation. It had to be beyond a doubt that this is our official teaching and not Noel's interpretation. Only then would many members consider the country living message. The third negative consequence is there has developed an opposing response to country living from within the church leadership. While we have clearly shown that the official stance of the General Conference is to educate the membership on country living, there have been articles and presentations that propose that city living is potentially fine. For instance, we spoke about the June 1980 Ministry Magazine article, How Shall We Work the Cities? In that, we focus on Ted Wilson's section, to minister from without, but the other section focus on ministering from within. It was written by Gottfried Osterwald, PhD, then the director of the Institute of World Mission, Andrews University. Here are some snippets. The Adventist attitude toward the cities, particularly in North America, can best be characterized by the term Jonah Syndrome. Away from the cities, away from the cities, these centers of wickedness and symbols of evil. We are constantly told that we cannot get close to God unless we are surrounded by nature, that we cannot even hear his voice in the man-made environment of brick and glass and steel. Cities are the symbols of man's revolt against God and the object of his wrath. Safety and salvation, therefore, are found in the country. Not only does this Jonah syndrome affect our theology, but it also shapes our whole missionary outlook and methodology. As recently as 1978, the annual council adopted a statement called Country Living, in which Adventists are urged to leave the cities and buy a few acres of land out in the country where, uncontaminated by centers of evil and corruption, they may prepare themselves for the coming of Christ. And if one had to work in the cities, then at least one should not live there where the wiles of the devil ensnare us in his web. Only one or two people spoke out against the adoption of this document. It would be foolish to deny the threats and dangers of this urban world to our spirituality. However, the solution is not a withdrawal from the cities, but rather a closer walk with God, a greater dependence on his spirit, as well as a deeper involvement on the part of the whole people of God in mission to reach the cities for Christ and to penetrate and infuse the life and thought of the cities with the gospel. The evil forces may be more intensely at work in the cities than in the country, but so are the angels and the spirits of God, who is constantly at work to reconcile people to himself and make them his disciples. To that very end, Jesus himself prayed to his Father not to take his followers out of this urban world, but to protect them from evil. Thus, the call to come out of the city should be sounded more clearly today than in the days of the prophets or even of Ellen White. But it is a call to leave behind all worldliness, immorality, and selfishness, all evil and the sphere of its influence. Not a call to isolate ourselves from concentrations of people for whom Christ died and whom God loves. That sphere of evil, moreover, is not limited to what we geographically and sociologically identify as a city. That sphere of evil surrounds and tempts us everywhere in this world. For the whole world lies in the power of evil. But thank God, all power in heaven and on earth belongs to Christ. On that basis, he bids us not to leave the cities, but to stay there, even move there, to make disciples of all classes, castes, communities, and people. Now, let me say, the purpose of these first presentations was not to prove that country living is true or biblical. We will study that in a future presentation. The purpose was to show that the General Conference does officially teach, endorse country living. Therefore, we will not try to refute or disprove Dr. Osterwald's article. Now, let's consider what he wrote. He refers to the Adventist attitude toward the cities as Jonah Syndrome. This is clearly a different perspective from the documents we've seen so far. 
Also, he clearly states that the GC Annual Council in 1978 did adopt a document endorsing country living. However, he is distinct in his disagreement, saying only one or two people spoke out against the adoption of this document. His proposal can be summed up, the solution is not a withdrawal from the cities, but rather a closer walk with God, a greater dependence on His Spirit. It is a call to leave behind all worldliness, immorality, and selfishness, all evil and despair of its influence. He bids us not to leave the cities, but to stay there, even move there, to make disciples of all classes, castes, communities, and people. It is evident that Dr. Osterwald was not in support of the country living message. And it is fine to have healthy discussion, even disagreement. However, the problem is that since the General Conference is not deliberate in promoting country living, it is really up to the members to research country living on their own. And some may find that the church does officially endorse country living. However, Others may discover articles like Dr. Osterwald's in opposition to it and wrongly conclude that the church does not officially teach country living. These conditions inevitably lead to confusion and mistrust. I pray that the GC will come to the forefront as they did in 1946 and directly state that the Seventh-day Adventist Church believes and teaches the country living message out of the cities. But until that day comes, let us the lay membership study and share what we learn with our fellow Adventists. So it's been quite a journey going through our church history on country living. I hope you were blessed. As we end this section, I want us to end as we began. Let's review those quotes. In God's plan for Israel, every family had a home on the land with sufficient ground for tilling. Thus were provided both the means and the incentive for a useful, industrious, and self-supporting life. And no devising of men has ever improved upon that plan. To the world's departure from it is owing to a large degree the poverty and wretchedness that exist today. The physical surroundings in the cities are often a peril to help. The constant liability to contact with disease, the prevalence of foul air, impure water, impure food. The crowded, dark, unhealthful dwellings are some of the many evils to be met. It was not God's purpose that people should be crowded into cities, huddled together in terraces and tenements. It is Satan's purpose to attract men and women to the cities and to gain his object he invents every kind of novelty and amusement, every kind of excitement, and the cities of the earth today are becoming as were the cities before the flood. The Lord desires His people to move into the country, where they can settle on the land and raise their own fruit and vegetables, and where their children can be brought in direct contact with the works of God in nature. Take your families away from the cities is my message. Again and again, the Lord has instructed that our people are to take their families away from the cities into the country where they can raise their own provisions. For in the future, the problem of buying and selling will be a very serious one. We should now begin to heed the instruction given us over and over again get out of the cities into rural districts where the houses are not crowded closely together and where you will be free from the interference of enemies. I pray that now you are able to see these statements with a new clarity. There is nothing misleading, nothing out of context here. These statements mean exactly what they are saying to us. Get out of the cities into the country especially as we see restrictions increasing and liberties being reduced we are to move so that we can provide a better home for our families and this message is endorsed by the seventh day adventist church this is not noel brown's message or interpretation not the interpretation of a fanatic this is the official teaching of our church i asked from the start if this is official would you study on this topic 
I pray that you have already begun your journey reading on this topic. I ask that you share this information with others so they too can learn and prepare for what is to come. So where do we go from here? Now we can begin to study country living. All of that was just the intro. And we had to do that lengthy intro because as was said earlier, many members have a mental block that if it's not coming from the pulpit first, they won't listen. I needed you to know that this is official so that when we study, you will be receptive to the information. So what is there to study about country living? Haven't we made the point? Notice, all we did was study to find out if the SDA church teaches country living. The true or main question should be, is country living biblical? Yes, the church teaches this and Ellen White wrote on this, but what does the Bible say? That is the question. We will begin at the beginning, the Garden of Eden, and work our way up through Bible time to see if this message is taught in the Word of God. Why is this important? Because too often when we discuss present true topics such as country living, many members can only quote from Ellen White, but they are unable to give a Bible study on the topic. We must be able to stand on the Bible alone to defend our faith. I pray that you are blessed as we did these first videos on country living. Imagine the blessing that is waiting for you as we study the scriptures. Now I know that these videos have been long. So before we get into this next section on country living and the Bible, we will have two very short videos. The first is country living is not and the second is country living is. In those videos, we will give you a quick list of myths and misunderstandings people have about country living and then a quick list of what country living is really about. Then we'll get into a powerful study series on is country living biblical. I look forward to you joining me for this study. Remember iron sharpens iron so let's continue learning together. God bless.